Hey everyone, Madrybred here. Pokemon Black with only Sandile was super easy. Let's follow that up with something totally different. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Elder Scrolls Oblivion with no magic or magic equipment? Alright, I'm kind of pumped for this one, just because I've never tried it before in Oblivion. I did this in Skyrim once, but I could see it being real hard in Oblivion. Our goal is to try and get through the entire game without casting a single spell or using any kind of magical equipment. Considering just how common magic is in Oblivion and how many regular enemies will have at least a little bit of basic magic, this is kind of a big handicap. We're basically role-playing being the Rock Lee of Tamrael. We can't learn any magic, so we have to get amazing at everything else. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so if this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm sure this is possible, but I expect the final battle with Mankar Cameron to be absolutely awful. Close quarters while outnumbered with no healing magic is gonna be brutal. Let's explain the rules. I'm not allowed to use any magicka, and I'm not allowed to use any equipment that has any magical properties. So you know, a sword is fine, but a sword with an enchantment isn't. Lastly, only cosmetic mods are allowed. I'm not allowed to use any mods that affect gameplay. Also, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. First is character creation. Man, how do I even want to play this? I guess archery, blade, blunt, and hand-to-hand -hand are going to be the only offensive skills we're allowed to use. Considering I have no magic weapons, high sneak with archery is pretty tempting. Might be one of the only ways to deal tons of damage quickly. But at the same time, I could see a big heavy armored orc tank doing better in small spaces like the final battle with Mankar. Either way, no restoration magic means our only healing will be from waiting when no enemies are around and from healing potions. I'd say that using alchemy is fine, since you're not using any magicka, you're literally just using herbalist tools from your inventory. Like, I have a mortar and pestle in my actual real life kitchen. I don't think mashing herbs is magic. It only tastes magic. Anyway, I ended up going with an orc. I'm sure any physically powerful race would be fine, but I went with orcs because I really like orcs. It gives us the Berserk ability, and that's kind of like casting a spell, even though it doesn't use magicka. I think I just won't use it. Still, an orc will be good since I'm going heavy armor this time. I want to be a classic sword and shield knight on an adventure to slay the evil wizard. For major skills, I just picked a bunch of melee fighter type stuff that we'd be using, as well as archery and sneak. I went with blade rather than blunt weapons for no particular reason. Yeah, this will probably make the run harder, since this many major skills that we actually use will make us level up too fast to gain decent stat gains, and we might end up getting outpaced by enemies, since they get stronger as we level up. But I just want to see what happens. <laughs> if I lose, I lose. Alright, I'm gonna go find a random dungeon, just for fun. After wandering through the forest for a little while, the first place I found is this underground dungeon called Lindai. It's your typical Oblivion dungeon with skeletons and zombies, as well as a few traps. Right near the start, we have these swinging blades to get past, although they don't really hurt that much. Still, I have to be careful about stuff like this. We can't just use a weak healing spell, so our only way of healing when enemies are around are potions. I really don't want to waste those. Next was the open room with gas traps and a few zombies. They ended up fighting me for ages. Just to show you how long it takes to kill a zombie, I'm gonna make the video kinda small and time lapse it. Every zombie in the dungeon takes this long to knock out, by the way. So I'm pretty happy that there's only like six or so. The skeletons just aren't that bad to fight. Eventually, I get to this big room with a bunch of welkin stones. I can't reach them by jumping, but with arrows, I can knock them down. Thanks for that tip, by the way. I read it in the comments on one of these challenges once. Anyway, so there's these floor traps that raise you up to crush you into spikes on the ceiling, but one of the floors actually just takes you up to a switch to get more loot. Literally all of the loot in the entire dungeon sucked, but at least I got some skill from fighting stuff. Once I got to the final room, I took out a bunch of skeletons, then found this door that seems to require a special key. Huh. Well, as far as I can tell, I explored the whole rest of the place, so I don't think the key is in here. Maybe this dungeon is attached to some quest I haven't done? Oh well, I got what I wanted, and that was some skill. I sleep to level up, get a little bit of strength, endurance, and speed, then go to the first Oblivion gate. I want a real challenge. So, we're in the first gate. 
There's a lot to worry about here. Scamps have long-ranged fire spells, there's a lot of traps, and the Daedra are decent melee fighters. The area is densely packed with enemies at times, so we don't always have a chance to use the wait command between fights. It fully heals us, but we can only use it if there's no enemies in the vicinity. Right away I saved the soldier nearby and told him to follow us. He doesn't really help much, but he can take a few hits for us, so I appreciate it. Believe it or not, the scamps can be kind of dangerous in big enough groups. One is easy and two isn't bad, but if I have to fight three in a row without healing, then we come pretty close to dying. Fighting our way to the tower is kinda hard, but I chose to fight everything I could on my way. We need as much blade and block skill as we can get. Hey, you see that scamp up there? I think I can get him. Did I get him? I think I got him. <sighs> yep. I'm basically the best archer ever. Nobody else compares. Oh. <laughs> I think he got jumped while I was doing target practice. Eh, you win some, you lose some. So the tower itself isn't too bad, but we do have to be careful to wait whenever we can for health. The armored up Daedra look like they'd be the most dangerous in this place, but they actually go down in a few hits. We have to be careful since they hit a bit harder and they attack pretty fast compared to scamps, but I'd argue the scamps are more dangerous since they have so much more health. As long as I'm careful to wait whenever I can and keep my sword in good shape with repair hammers, I'm okay. In the final room, there were two Daedric... Uh... Wizards? Casters? Mages? I guess mages. They were super easy, but the second one tried to take me out by draining my destruction magic. <laughs> Joke's on you, we don't have any. The tower itself was actually easier than the rest of Oblivion outside of it. Who knew? With that done, we all stormed the city to get Sean Bean. I wonder how confusing this game must be to people who've only experienced this game through my challenges, but haven't seen the first one where I explained the plot as I went. Anyway, next is the bar fight, then the book collection quest, and of course a bit of the sewers. In other words, a lot of busy work. Rest assured though, that I'm trying to grind out every last bit of skill that I can on my way. I want to level up as fast as I can, since the faster I can level up, the sooner we can get some non-magical gear. Sure, the enemy will get stronger too, but I want to try something new for once. Time for that bar fight! We actually got a katana now that we're a member of the blades, so that's got six attack rather than three on our old steel sword. The fight was super easy in general though, since it's two on one. Then of course we have to do the sewers. There's no danger here, Boris takes out everything in one hit for us, as if we needed help. I kinda wanna come down here when I'm super high level one day though, just to see if the sewer is filled with super high level monsters. That could be funny. At the end of this is the meeting with the recruiter, and I'm actually a little bit worried about how the fight will go since we'll be outnumbered, but I've got some health potions, so I think it'll be okay. While we're fighting through the sewers, this video is once again sponsored by you guys on Patreon. This is all a one-man show, and I'm way too picky with ads to get ones that I don't like to fill time between the good ones, so I think fan support is a preferable alternative to lying about products for advertisement money, as is unfortunately so common on YouTube. As always though, the show is totally free. Thanks. So this time, I tell Boris to meet with the recruiter, so that the moment he shows up, I can run in and take them down with the both of us before his backup gets there. It works great as we take him down so fast that his guards don't even enter the room. Must have just been rats. Did they really not notice us? Oh, okay, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, they were pretty easy too. This is for sure a better strategy than just attacking them one on one at the table. Man, our level up stats kind of suck. Next up is the Mythic Dawn base. I always love this place. The first major fight with a huge group of people. Most of them don't really have great armor either, so we can probably take them out pretty fast, as long as we're careful not to get shot down by their spells. Then you have come here to die. Paradise. Paradise. You know, for a character with dialogue, you'd think he'd have more health. So this base is divided into three major parts. 
The first part was super easy, just a few guards that can mostly fight one on one. This is the warm up for the second part where you have the massive fight on the altar. After that is the third part where we have to fight lots of cultists, but most of them tend to be really weak and run away at low health. The first part went great, so I'm confident going into the altar fight. Right away, I snuck up on them while they were praying, then lunged in to start fighting. Most of these guys only take three or four hits to take down, but plenty of them like to hang back and shoot lightning at us, and those hits actually deal a lot of damage. There's also a few guys with full armor and weapons, they were a bit of a problem. In the end, we actually came really close to dying, and there was one guard who just kept constantly shooting lightning at me, so I had to be really careful to hide behind stuff to block it until I could get up close and finish them off. It was a really close call. The rest of the base was basically my reward for surviving the big fight. We got to fight tons of super weak cultists that don't have any armor. Normally I wouldn't bother hunting down every last fleeing opponent that I can, it takes a while, but we get blade experience for hitting them, and I want as much as I can get. Next up is the Spies Quest, where I, uh, just wait around for hours at this rock. Then the spies show up and fight me. There's two of them, but they never show up at the same time, so even though they have a lot more health than the normal Daedra, I still just beat them in one-on-one -on -one melee duels. Actually, the second one was much easier than the first, because he kept getting distracted by a deer and trying to fight it instead. This is the caliber of individual that joins the Mythic Dawn. Next up, we need a Daedra Artifact. Now, I know we'd get absolutely destroyed if I went to the usual vampire cave, so we're gonna do the really fun Clavicus Vile quest instead. Border Watch has gotta be the most oblivion location in all of oblivion. Black Marsh has become more dangerous than ever. So I pick this lock to steal some super cheese that they have. Then I go put it in a pot in the middle of town so that the town gets overrun with rats. Then I grab the rat poison that they put out and put it in the sheep's food. Most of them never touched it, but they all died in unison anyway. Then it started raining flaming wolves and uh, that's the end of the quest. I explained how this quest works in full in a previous Oblivion challenge, but uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't remember what one, and I'm too busy to look it up while I type this, so I guess you're just gonna have to all go rewatch all of my Oblivion challenges for context. Link in the description to the playlist. Have fun. So, Brumagate is normally super easy, and it still wasn't too bad, but this is the hardest time I've ever had with it. Since we're level 4, the Daedra here will often have magical weapons. Obviously, we can't use them, but at least we can sell them. Some have really weird effects, like this one near the tower. After a fight with one of the Daedra, I realized I was glowing, so I looked at his mace, and it drains your illusion magic while making you produce light. Why would you ever put those enchantments on a mace? <laughs> it makes your opponent glow. <laughs> I guess maybe it's good for, like, if they like to turn invisible? You know what? Draining illusion magic and making you glow could be a useful enchantment if you're fighting an invisible opponent. Anyway, the tower itself is pretty easy. I did a good job of keeping most of our guards alive so that we could run in and just mob anybody who gets in our way. While I was here, I got a silver sword off a dead guard. Considering the next dungeon has ghosts and you need silver weapons to hit them, this is perfect timing. Speaking of, we're in Sancrator. This place is full of ghosts and skeletons. Our job is to hunt down and defeat all of the skeletons that hold the souls of the old members of the Blades. There's no specific ones that's super hard in here, so it's not like there's a final boss or anything, just a bit of travel. Actually, the ghosts in here can get pretty annoying because if we try to run past them too much, they start following us through the whole dungeon, and they're pretty dangerous in large numbers, so I had to keep stopping to take them out. Plus, while they're following us, we count as in combat, so we can't heal by waiting. That makes this dungeon take about two times longer than normal. The actual blades aren't that tough though, even though a few of them have magical swords because we've leveled a bit, they still weren't a problem. The ghosts knocking us down with snowballs when our stamina was low was much worse. It didn't take long before we got the armor, but this is actually the closest we've come to dying in a while. Next up is Miskarkand, the place with a bunch of zombies and goblins fighting. Now, despite being a higher level than usual, this place is mostly the same. 
No new enemies, although I think some of the goblins have better gear than usual. I could be wrong. The goblins were actually much harder to fight than the zombies for once, as our silver sword seems to do a pretty good job against the zombies. They still take a lot of hits to take down, but they stumble all the time, so it's really not that bad. In the boss fight here with the lich, I rush towards him the moment he shows up, trying to knock him out before he can get behind his zombie bodyguards. He almost got away, but I just managed to blitz him down, then I was able to easily continue backing up and fighting his bodyguards till they were done. They may have looked a little close, but if I really wanted to be a jerk, I'm sure I could have taken off my heavy armor, jumped out of their range, and then rained down arrows on them since we have hundreds of them. Still, I'm happy I could take him out with my sword. Makes me feel more confident about the mancar fight. Okay, next up is the defense of Bruma and the Great Gate. Now, you can do some side quests so that you'll have more and better armored guards to help in the defense of Bruma, but in my experience, you don't need any of that. They can do the whole fight on their own without any help when you're level 1. That said, we're already level 6, the highest we've been at this point in any challenge run, actually, so the enemies might be too strong for them. The enemies get stronger as we level up, but I don't think that our allies get stronger. Let's see. Well, it starts off okay, but stronger and stronger enemies start spawning as it goes. It doesn't take long before the guards actually get overwhelmed. This is bad because if Sean Bean dies here, then it counts as you dying and you have to load a save. At some point, the Daedra ran after us, so I just kept blocking and waiting for the gate to open. As soon as it did, I ran in. Now, I know there's no way that we're making it up the tower within the time limit if I stand and fight everything, so I sprint for it. In heavy armor. <laughs> Yeah, we take a lot of hits along the way, and we actually lose our first few health potions of the entire challenge because I kept stepping in lava. I got to the tower alright, but once I was in there, it was super intense. I was getting chased the whole way, leaping out of the way of traps, trying to dodge around enemies in front of me, all while running away from the ones that were right behind me. Being a lot slower due to heavy armor meant that I only ever had a small lead on them, and any time I was waiting for a slow door to open, I was putting my back to a wall, holding up my shield, blocking hits, and looking for my chance to run past. The whole way, I just kept hearing the sounds of spells hitting walls behind me as I ran. When I finally got to the top, I grabbed the sigil stone, shielded up, and waited for the gate to close. Not only did we survive, but because Boris and Bird died, we can scavenge their blades armor to get ourselves a much stronger suit of heavy armor than the iron stuff that we had been wearing since the start of the run. With that done, all that's left is the gate to paradise. I'm not confident that I can win for sure, but I've made a backup save here just in case. I've stocked up on potions and I'm ready to fight. Wish me luck. So the garden was actually really hard. I think the hardest the garden has ever been for me. Because we have to wait to heal, and the wait command doesn't work with enemies nearby, we're often sneaking around to really weird spots where the game knows that nothing is near us. The range for an enemy being too close is really wide, by the way. Even then, I quickly realized that some things spawn behind us and can gang up on us, and it seems like often after resting, an enemy will just appear next to us. Because of that, I had to start sneaking as much as possible, because the flame atronarchs are super dangerous unless it's one-on-one. -on -one. The little raptor dudes aren't that bad, at least. At the boss fight at the end, I had to switch to the third person camera because the fire effects from his sword are so <laughs> blinding. The fight here was super easy though. It was much easier than just fighting two fire atronarchs in a row. Oh yeah, and he drops the band of the chosen. Technically it's magic gear, but like you literally have to wear it to open the door in here and all they do is make you take extra fire damage. So I don't think it breaks the rules. It makes you weaker than if you're not wearing them. This isn't an advantage. So the grotto is kind of dangerous. Lots of fire atronarchs spawn and we have a fire weakness due to the bands of the chosen. So I'm extra careful to try and lead them away from each other so that we can fight them. Well, not always one-on-one, -on -one, but the closest that I can manage. Personally, I prefer fighting the little raptor dudes. They're the weakest thing in here. I mean, either than, of course, unarmored cultists. Whenever I got the chance, I just pushed enemies into the lava to save us having to fight them. Yeah, even the flame dudes die by falling in lava for some reason. Once we got to the final section of the grotto, it was easy. There was one hard part where we had to fight two flame atronarchs and a scamp at the same time, but by being careful to get them stuck on walls and stuff like that, we could pick them off and still be okay. 
Believe it or not, but it was much harder to get distance from enemies to allow us to heal in the garden rather than the grotto. All right, the final stretch before Mankar, the hardest fight in the game. Here's the idea that I have in mind. Mankar doesn't have great armor, and I've got a silver longsword that's pretty good for a level 6 character. I know it will still take a lot of swings, though, and fatigue could be an issue, so I've made dozens of these really weak restore fatigue potions out of basic food that you can find around town. That might be enough to keep stamina from being a problem, but only time will tell. Let me know in the comments if you think we can win this or not. Let's do this. The moment I enter the room, I drink a few weak potions to boost our strength and to give us night vision, then jump Mankar's guards while he's still talking. They revive over time, but this gives us maybe 30 seconds alone with Mankar. Right away, I get on him and try to follow him, slashing him as he runs around the room casting spells. It doesn't take long before I notice that the guards have revived and our buddy went down, so I'm constantly going in and out of the menu, drinking potions whenever it says that I'm allowed to again. There's a little bit of a cooldown on drinking too many potions at once. I'm mostly drinking stamina potions, but one or two healing potions were required. I keep going for side power attacks to hopefully disarm Mankar of his staff, but we ended up disarming him of his life instead. That was a first try on the Mankar fight without any magic gear. That was awesome. All that's left is the Siege of the Imperial City. This part is usually easy, but we're also not usually level 6 here, so stronger stuff spawns. And by that I mean it's mostly normal stuff, but the Daedra tend to have better weapons. Other than that, it goes the same. So the same, in fact, that this happened yet again. <laughs> Hey, you remember when in the invisibility run, I melted that dude? Good times. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna fight him. Let's just go in the temple. That was a super fun run. I was really worried about the man car fights and so much of the garden was brutal, but it actually went okay. I really hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon challenge should be up next week on Saturday like usual, with Pokemon Fire Red with only one Chansey. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Outro time! Uh, I don't really have anything planned for this, so I think I'm gonna do something fun. Um, I saw something today that I have never seen before. Uh, or at least I haven't seen since the early days of YouTube. But today, I went on my, my YouTube homepage, which I almost never do. I mostly just go on the subscriptions page. But I went on the homepage uh, today, and I was promoted uh, a video called First Playthrough Fallout New Vegas Part 2 Yeehaw Every Enemy is Bullying Me. Um, <laughs> and it's it's got nine views, and it's from a channel called Kicha23, with 72 subscribers. Very small channel, but a lot of uploads. Looks like they've been streaming for a while. Anyway, um, the video has nine views at the time that it got promoted to me, and it's one day old, and it's literally part two of like a five and a half hour stream of somebody playing Fallout New Vegas for the first time. I thought this was the most random thing in the world, uh, so I, I clicked on, on the video and I saw that they had a Twitch page and I went over to their Twitch and they were live streaming, so I, hang, I hung out in their stream for a little bit and it was a fun little chill uh, stream, small one, so I thought uh, it was just a fun little thing. I haven't seen most of their channel, but they seemed pretty chill and cool when I hung out in their stream for like 20 minutes. I'm gonna have a link in the description to their YouTube channel uh, somewhere near the top issue of the description. If it's not there, yell at me on Twitter until I remember to put it in there. <laughs> and I know most people don't watch to the end, but it's a cool little thing. The hardcores of you who watch all the way to the end of these can go over to their channel and check them out. And who knows? Maybe you'll like them. Maybe they'll be live on Twitch when, uh, when, when you see this video and you can go over and say hi and that MDB sent, sent me and stuff. Sent sent me, sent you, you know what I'm trying to say. I don't know, I thought that'd be a cool thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just want to give opportunities to random channels and stuff. This channel is not, not a fan of mine or anything. They don't know me, uh, but why not? Uh, no harm in it, right? I'm gonna go get working on some stuff. You have fun checking out that channel. Until next time, have a nice day.